Welcome back to the channel everyone, I hope you are doing absolutely well, this is AD back with another video. So today is going to be the review of the daughter's unofficial for the Redmi Note 3. So without any further ado, let's now get started. So here is my Redmi Note 3 running the Dot OS unofficial ROM. Let me first show you the about device section before showing you anything else. So going into the about phone and the Android version. As you can see, this is the Dot OS. The Android version is obviously 9.0 Pi. The version here is version 3.1 and it clearly says over here, as you can see, it's unofficial build. The security patch is of July 5th, 2019. Whereas this is August, yep, this is the latest build at the time of recording this video, but still it's with July security patch and again with the latest build, it will be available with August security patch. It should have been updated with August patch for this build, but nope, that's not the case over here. But with the next build, it will be synced with the August security patch. As you can see, the kernel here is the Extrema X27 kernel version is 3.10.108 and the build date here it says Sunday August 4, 2019. I think so that's the reason it's with July security patch because it was built before 5th of August and I'm not sure but yep that's what it is. So talking about other stuff, as you can see the build date here, it says Sunday August 4, 2019 again and going back and talking about other stuff like the digital well-being, as you can see here is the digital well-being but that graph is not shown over here. As you know, if you update it from the Play Store, it will show its sims as per some users but I didn't update anything from the Play Store yet and it's not showing that graph. After updating, it will show probably. So going into the security and location, fingerprint scanner is working absolutely well for me. Let me show you the speed. As you can see, not the fastest, but yep, it works fine. Here it is. Even the location sensor works fine, no issues with that. Going into the display option, all the standard stuff is present over here, like the night light. Let me turn it on. As you can see, you can change the intensity of it from there. Works absolutely well. So talking about the tap to wake, that's double tap to wake. It was disabled by default. I have enabled it and it's working absolutely well by the way, here it is. It also gives haptic feedback, that's really good. Pocket detection is also there, I have disabled that. It doesn't come enabled by default. QS style style is present over here as you can see. By default it's on this one, but you can put it to pretty much whichever you want. Let me try this one. That's it, as you can see. No system UI force close over there. Without that it changed the QS style style, that's really nice. Also the font can be changed from here as you can see all the available fonts are here and a bit of lag is also there. So talking about the customization options let me show you the dot extras as you can see well organized customization options over here. I have already reviewed this in tons of other Pi ROMs it's pretty much similar to those ROMs it's working fine by the way all the major customizations. Let me show you some of the basic ones like the navigation bar. You can enable on screen navigation buttons from here as you can see. It's working fine and you can also change the height etc portrait height and landscape width etc but i like to use hardware keys at least on this device so going back and talking about other stuff like the recents here it is you can also change the recents it's on pi you can put it to oreo if you want to and other stuff like the status bar customizations here it is battery styles Battery percentage, I have enabled it next to the icon. It comes disabled by default. Battery styles are present over here. Even the Android Q battery style is present. And battery bar also it's there, as you can see. Network graphic monitor is enabled by default. I didn't enable that. Pretty much all the standard customizations are here and they are working fine. Talking about Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. Everything is working absolutely well. I didn't have any issues with the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or anything like that. Let me show you my last Geekbench score really quick so that you can get an idea regarding the performance in this room. As you can see, I've got a score of 3504 for the multi-core and 1469 for the single core. Pretty much the standard score what we have seen in other ROMs too. Talking about general performance, it's working absolutely well. I didn't have any issues like lags or anything like that. Minor lags here and there in the system at times, but that are not noticeable by the way. But yeah, there are slight lags and it's not the fault of ROM, I think, because I have seen those slight minor lags in other ROMs too. In a nutshell, the performance in this ROM is really good. There should be no any issues regarding performance. So talking about PUBG gameplay in this ROM, PUBG was also running absolutely well. And as usual, the customizations were on balance and the frame rate was on medium. And yep, the gameplay was really good. I enjoyed playing PUBG in this ROM too, but in the extended usage, it was lagging a little bit. And that's like in standard in all other ROMs. In a nutshell, the PUBG gameplay was good. You can play PUBG, definitely play PUBG in this room, not an issue with that. So talking about the battery life, let me show you my battery state still now. So going into the battery. 
and the battery usage. As you can see, when I first booted the ROM, the device was somewhere around 95 to 96% of charge. Later on, I kept the phone for standby for like 20 hours. Yep, for 20 hours of standby, it had just drained somewhere around 4 to 5% of battery. That's really insane standby time in my opinion. 4% itself, 4 to 5% is really good. So talking about the PUBG gameplay, this is not accurate again, guys. For some applications, it isn't appearing itself, but for some applications, it's appearing over here. As you can see, 26 minutes, 1% literally impossible. I played PUBG for around 25 minutes and there the battery drain was somewhere around 11 to 12%. Again, the standard battery drain. YouTube, I played video for almost around 20 minutes continuously and there the battery drain was exactly 5%. Yes, 5% of drain for 20 minutes of playback on 480p on Wi-Fi. That's really good. And other usage includes music player for the sound output, sound output is really good. Also a small applications like Play Store etc. It is not appearing over here. And now the battery is down to 72%. Geekbench it isn't appearing itself over here. As you can see I also use Geekbench but it's not appearing over here. I don't know for what. So for more details you can DM me on Instagram guys. On Telegram I'm not that active but you can join the Telegram channel too. There are other users and developers too. Till now the battery life in this room seems to be really good. I will continue using this room for at least two more days and later on I'll tell you guys on my Instagram stories or you can just ask me over there. I'm really busy these days in my college work that's why I just forget to post screenshots and I am also interested more in photography contents that's why I upload more of that. If you want you can ask me on Instagram I definitely reply to each and every person over there each and every subscriber or any other person who is asking for help. It's all about technology 24 into 7 link is in the description or it's somewhere appearing over here you can follow me over there. So talking about the camera application let me show you that quickly as you can see here is the camera app and again we have that camera app where we get lots and lots of options customization options it's working fine and even the 4k video recording should work fine let me show you that really quick so going into video recording video quality 4k works well but here it is, that error continues in this room too. When you tap on the screen while recording a 4K video, it just gives force closes. You need to close that app from the memory in order to use it again. So guys, this was a quick little review of the Daughters on Official running on the Redmi Note 3. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Also do follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm active over there. You can ask me any questions regarding tech. This is all about technology 24 into 7. Signing off for the moment. You guys have a great day. This.